using the text recorder node, we're going to go from this to this whilst learning stuff along the way. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the generated, the normal, the UV and the object texture coordinates and how we can use them to our advantage. So the first two things we're going to enable, I'm going to go edit preferences and we're going to type in the landscape. So I'm going to turn on the landscape and landscape. The other thing that I'm going to turn on is the node preview add-on. Now this is an add-on from the blender market. However, this is just going to make our life a little bit easier as we go through and explain this. So first up, let's delete the default cube. Shift A, I'm gonna come over into mesh. Down the bottom, we've got landscape, and I'm just gonna use the default landscape. From here, let's zoom in. I'm gonna go a new material, Shift A to search, and I'm gonna type in texture coordinates, and then Shift A, and I'm gonna add in a color ramp, okay? Gonna plug the color into the base color. Obviously, nothing really of interest has happened at the moment. But what I am going to do now is I'm going to go shift A, search, and I'm going to go X, Y, Z, and I want to separate the X, Y, and Z. So let's start off with generate, goes into there, and we're just going to look at the Z coordinates. So I'm going to bring the black in a little bit, the white in a little bit, press a plus sign. I'm going to move our extra node all the way to the edge, and we're going to put in pink. This is going to help us just kind of explain what these first four do. So if I come into side view with numpad one, and we're looking at the generated coordinate first, the way this works is because we've separated X, Y, and Z, we're only looking at the Z value. At the moment, the Z value of the object itself is at the bottom here will be zero. So that's this point here on the color ramp. And the top value, which is kind of, let's say is one, is at the peak. So that's why we've put in this pink point. So everything we do in between zero and one is the bottom of the object and the top of the object. Now, this is different to object. So if we plug object into the texture coordinate, the way this works is, is it goes from zero to one. So at the moment you can see that we've got probably 25% and it's about 25% up from zero. Now, if I go ahead and scale this, you can see nothing has changed. However, when I go control A and apply the scale, let's come back in and we can see that this is zero. So this is the black and this is the one. This is our pink. And then everything above is pink because it is above one. So now we can already see the difference between generated and object. So now if I were to plug generated in, think about what's the expectation. The expectation will be that the pink will be back at the very top, regardless of the scale. So control A, apply scale, control A, apply the scale. It's always going to be in the same spot. But with object, obviously control A, apply the scale. It's always gonna change depending on the scale. Now let's have a look at the normal. Have a think, what do you think can happen if we plug in the normal? As I plug it in, we can see that all the flat areas compared to Z, so obviously this is very flat, and all these peaks here are flat, this applies our pink. Now the steeper the area, it'll be black. So if I increase this black, we can kind of see how it's taking that normal data of the vertical, and we're going from zero to one. So obviously if I were to go separate X, Y, Z, and we plug the X into the factor, you can see how that's changed. So obviously we're grabbing this data here. So let's kind of bring that back. And obviously anything that is horizontal compared to the X will be pink. And this is the only place that it is. Okay. And we can do it for the Y as well. Come to the side. Yada, yada, yada. So now with that information, we can do some stuff. So let's go ahead and create our snow capped mountain. I'm just gonna move this to the side and we're gonna start off with the normal um, with the normal texture coordinate. Let's go ahead and get rid of our pink. I want our black and I want the snow to come from above. So let's go anything that's kind of black is where we want the snow to be. I know it's kind of counterintuitive to have white and black or black as the white and the white as the black. 
However, that's just how the mask is gonna work when we combine our next steps. From here, I'm gonna grab the texture coordinate again, and we'll also grab the separate X, Y, Z. And now we're gonna look at generate into the vector. Let's grab our color ramp as well again, and we're gonna grab the Z. Z goes into color, and we want pretty much everything above this line to be pure snow. Uh, so I might bring it down a little bit. There we go. However, the problem is, is that we've got this very sharp, defined line of snow. And it's gonna look a little bit silly. Well, actually, let's add these two together. So if I go Shift A Search, and we go Mix RGB, and we plug that one and that one, and we click Add, we can see we got some weird results, but with this one, I'm just gonna flip the Y. And now we've got this very straight line. Um, I am going to attach the color into the factor. And now everything above this line is gonna have a mixture of, let's say snow and dirt, with the dirt ever so slightly coming through. However, we've got this straight line coming through, which doesn't really work. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of extra loving down here. Let's go with that. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Search, and I'm gonna type in Noise, and we want a noise texture, and I wanna mix these two together. So let's go Shift A, Mix, Mix RGB, and we'll connect this one with this one, and rather than Mix, we're gonna go Add, and now you can kinda of see how that line is no longer so defined. So maybe what we might do is with the noise texture, we just change it to two, Mm, let's increase the size a little bit more. Roughness all the way up. And I think that is looking quite nice. However, if it doesn't seem like it's in a good position, I can always press Control T if you've got the Node Wrangler enabled. And then we can change the Z position. So you can see we've even got kind of like the snow cap coming down here. That's nice, Marco, good job. However, it's black and white. Let's do some textures. Let's disconnect this one and we're gonna work with the principal shader up here. And with a node wrangler enabled, I'm gonna use for the first material, extreme PBR combo. And so if we go into extreme PBR combo, massive selection of materials. I know that there is a snow material in here and there's some very beautiful materials. However, if I just add these, it kind of overwrites. So I'm actually gonna go into the file system for extreme PBR combo. Let's find our snow. Mm, I think it's snow three. Nope, let's go this one, snow seven. I'm gonna grab so seven, so snow seven. Control C. Now with the node wrangler still enabled, Control Shift T. I will paste in the file path. Let's grab everything except for the displace. I don't want displace and I don't need translucent. I'm gonna go principal shader texture setup. Let's move all this just up a little bit, just to clean it up. And the material has been applied. No, it hasn't. And this is because it is using UV coordinates. Now with the landscape add-on, it doesn't actually create a UV. So let's come over into UV editing. I'm gonna press numpad seven to go into top view, U and I'm gonna project from view to bounds. So now for the projection from above is applied to this square. So now when we come back into layout, now when we come back into shading, we can see that this is our applied snow. Now it is pretty bump and there's a massive footprint there. So maybe what we'll do is bring down the strength to maybe 0.1 and I'm gonna change the scale to maybe, let's go three, three, three. I think that, that is okay. Now let's shift D and duplicate our principal shader. And here there is a website called Ambient CG and we can just type in dirt or soil and you've got a whole bunch of PBR materials. You can click on one and download your texture set that you wanna use. Now with the same mindset, control shift T, I am just gonna jump back into extreme PBR combo because I know it. Let's grab our dirt material Principal shader, uh, strength will bring down to maybe 0.1. Displacement, we will get rid of. Uh, scale, let's go three, three, three. 
Beautiful. Now we need to combine these two materials. And for that one, all I'm going to do is shift A, search, and we're going to type in mix shader. All right. And then we're going to plug the shader of the dirt and we'll grab our snow little dot and plug that one in. Let's plug that into the material output. Let's come over into our material setup and plug that in. And now we've created that definition of snow with the dirt. Now you can see that the line seems to be still a little bit faded. So let's come into our bottom half and I'm just gonna tighten that up. If we want to kind of like start making it look a little bit prettier, let's go from object in the materials to world. And I'm currently in cycles. Let's go shift A search. I'm just gonna type in sky texture and we will dump that one in. And you can see how it's gone super bright. So let's come over into the render settings, into film, change the exposure to maybe 0.1. And now we've created a nice render. However, it still doesn't look, that line is still a little bit too sharp, I think now. So let's maybe extend it. And coming down onto our noise texture, let's maybe increase the detail a little bit. And now that line is a little bit more scattered. And if we wanted to, we could probably bring it down the hill a little bit more. So if we bring our black down and our white like so, we've got a very nice mountain effect. Did you find this useful? Let me know in the comments below. And would you like to see more of this? Like and subscribe and comment.